I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Let's just open in prayer. Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you, Father God, that your sons and daughters can gather together and that we can seek you, Lord. We can worship you. We can call on you, Lord. We can reach out to you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that some of us, if not most of us, felt breakthrough right now. Touch our lives. And we desire that, Lord. We desire that the Spirit of God will come in and completely change our lives. We desire that the Spirit of God will come in and take the, the, the old, the old us completely away. And create in us a new being. Okay? So we thank you for that, Father God. Lord, may your word come alive in our lives through the Holy Spirit. As we get into your word now, may the spirit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, just open up the truth of the word of God and feed it to our spirits and our souls. May there be good soil where the seed falls and where it shoots root and starts to grow and produce fruit according to your plan and purpose, your will, your kingdom. So we thank you for that, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And all God's people says, Amen. Amen, amen and Amen. Tanya, I want to start this evening with a, a scripture. A very well known, popular scripture. But coming in here this, this evening, the Lord gave me a message for his sons and daughters. I just didn't know how to start it. And as I was worshipping over there, I saw something. And, and the Lord brought me to this scripture. So if you want to follow um, as, as we start in the book of John, John chapter 3, very popular scripture, very. So I, I felt led that um, this evening, the Lord wants us to concentrate a little bit on the Holy Spirit, amen? The Holy Spirit. So John chapter 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can come or can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. Listen, family, verse 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit. I love the teachings of Jesus because Jesus taught in parables. Jesus took physical things and connected it to a spiritual truth so, so that people could, could connect what they see to what is going to happen in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? And so this scripture tonight, we're going to start with this. And the Lord, um, as I was worshiping at, at, at the back there, I, I said, Lord, how can, how can this be demonstrated? Now, family in Jesus, look how good the Lord is. 
right here at the bottom, there is a, a, a small heater fan. Okay? You cannot see that the wind from that fan. Some of you can't even feel it. But look what it does to this light. So even though you cannot see it, even though you cannot feel it, you can see the effect of it. Amen. 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 Even though we cannot see the Holy Spirit, even though we cannot feel the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has been given to us so the world can see the effect of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. 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 We simply cannot stay the same people if the Holy Spirit has moved in us. It's impossible. You have to change. You have to move. If the Spirit of God has touched your life, He is there to move you in the direction of Christ. And so family, this evening we are going to be talking about Ruach. Ruach. Beautiful. Hebrew word for Holy Spirit. Ruach. And the, the word for Holy Spirit in Hebrew, Ruach, means breath <coughs> or spirit or wind. Amen? Breath, spirit, and wind. Genesis 1, verse 2. I'm going to be pulling up very popular scriptures here, here this, this evening. But the Lord wants to... He wants to change our lives tonight. Brothers and sisters in Christ, can we sit and say to ourselves, no more? No more. No more. No more. I'm done. No more. No more. <laughs> Lord, I don't want myself anymore. I don't want to be the old jock. I don't want to. I want you. Amen. Amen. I want you to move into my life, Lord, and I want you, I want the people to see the effect of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And so Genesis Chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says, The earth was formless and void. The darkness was over the surface of the deep. Does this not describe everyone's heart before they know, know, know Jesus? Amen. Void, empty, formless. There's nothing there. It's just darkness and, and deep darkness. And then, hallelujah. And the breath or the spirit or the wind of God, the, the Rauch Elohim, the Rauch Elohim, the, the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters because what the Holy Spirit does is he goes to places where it's dark, where it's empty, where it's void, where there's destruction and he goes to put order. God's order, that's what He does. When the Spirit of God touches our lives, He takes the disorder and He casts it out. And he fills us with order. And He fills us with, with that Spirit, with that blessed anointing, that wind that the Lord is speaking of. So here we can see from the very beginning of time that the Holy Spirit was there to bring, to show an effect. To make people see that God is here. We cannot see Him, but He's here. Amen. He's moving through His Holy Spirit. Amen. And somehow, the world has to see the result of that. Amen? Amen. Exodus 31. This was such a touching scripture to me when the Lord showed me this. You know, family, when we read about the Holy Spirit, when we think about the Holy Spirit, the majority of the time we think uh, about the Holy Spirit changing and affecting us spiritually. Amen? Which is the truth. Yes. But I maybe can't speak for anyone here, but myself, I very little think about the Holy Spirit doing 
something physically, like, like, like physically in my life. Okay? But then this scripture, Exodus 31, from verse 1, please, Brother Brian. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with the Ruach. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. I filled him with wisdom. I filled him with understanding. I have filled him with knowledge. Listen. And all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Family, if you know this, this part in the Word of God, you'll know that the Lord blessed this man with this talent because they were busy setting up the tabernacle. And this man got the beautiful job of creating all those amazing godly pieces to put in the tabernacle. Beautiful. Amen. Can you imagine Monday afternoons, moms and, and kids craft days with this man? Oh, no. <laughs> it must have been anointing Amen. to spend time with him. Amen. And then it makes sense why Jesus comes to earth and his father in heaven chooses to give him a dad on earth that's a carpenter. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's, that's beautiful to me. The Bible goes on. The next scripture we're going to have a look at is Matthew chapter 3 from verse 13. Here's Brother Brian. Matthew chapter 3 from verse 13. So we can see that all through the Old Testament, the people of God did not want to follow the laws, rules, and regulations of the Lord. In the Old Testament, there were selected people that the Lord blessed with the, the, the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus comes, and this is what we are reading here now, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. Jesus replied, let it um, be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Rahum, the Spirit of God, descend on Jesus and rest on him. Look how beautiful that is. Family, where, where do we go to rest as people? We go to a calm place. We go to a Peaceful place. Amen. You, 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 don't, you don't run into a riot and go and sit and try and rest there. No. You go to a peaceful place. And so here, the Spirit of God comes and He descends and He, and, and, and he rests on Jesus because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. John chapter 20, verse 19. So now Jesus has fulfilled what he came to do. He died on the cross. He rose again. He's now appearing to the disciples. Jesus appeared to his disciples on the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together. With the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. We're going to see now why Jesus started with that family. Why Jesus started by saying to them, stop fearing. I want you to calm down. I want you to have peace. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Ruach. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
He needed them to first be peaceful for the Holy Spirit to be given to them. <clears throat> in Jesus, that's a key for us tonight. You are calling out for an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Try and try and try and get calm. Amen. Try and get calm. Try and try and get peace. Try and and, and be still and know that He is God, like the, the book of Psalms teaches us. And then the word of God goes on. Now, the Lord wants to show us something absolutely beautiful in 1 Corinthians. This is Paul writing to the church about the Holy Spirit. Family, this is beautiful. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Two verses. But the Lord's going to show us four powerful, powerful things out of these two verses. So, have we got it? I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 19. Sorry, brother. Verse 19. <clears throat> yes. Listen, family. Do you not know? You say, he's saying this to the church as if they should know it. Amen. We should know this that he's saying to, to us now. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Amen. Now, because this was written in Greek, I'm going to take it and put it in the right order for everyone here tonight. Not me. The Lord's going to put it in the right order. Okay. So the right order is this. Number one is, verse 20, you were bought at a price. That's number one. Family, we were bought at a price that we cannot fathom. We cannot start to think about the price that Jesus paid to purchase us. So number one is, you were bought at a price. Number two is, you are not your own. So if I was bought by a price, Christ paid for me. I don't belong to myself anymore. Does that make sense? Amen. That's what Paul is saying to the church here. So number one, he's saying to them um, that you were bought by a price. And number two is, you are not your own. And number three, he says then to them, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit? So if I now know that I was bought by a price, I now know that I'm not my own, then I must know, if I'm not my own, I belong to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then number three, number four, what must I do being a temple? I must therefore honor God with your bodies. Honor Him. Honor Him. The people must see the effect of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? Where I once was a very angry, hostile man, I must now be a peaceful, kind, generous man. Amen? Because that's what happens in a temple. Where I once never worshipped the Lord, I must now worship the Lord. With everything inside of me. Every word I speak must be a word of worship. When I encourage my brothers and my sisters, that's how I worship the Lord. Amen. So we put this in, 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 in that order. And then, last scripture that the Lord wants to show us. John chapter 16. From verse 13. Please, Brother Brian. Now, now we know we temples of the Holy Spirit. We know we were bought by a price uh, and, and we must honor God because we are temples. Now it goes further and it says, but when he, the spirit, Ruach, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Verse 14. <clears throat> He will glorify me 
because it is from me that he has received what he will make known to you. Now again, because this was written in Greek, we're going to put it in, in the right order again. So, we start in, in verse 13. Okay. The Spirit will do what for us? Guide us. The Spirit will guide us. Not my mind, not my education. The Spirit of God will guide us, okay? To do what? One thing. To glorify Jesus. One thing. Family in Jesus. The Lord did not call us to be rocket science scientists. He did not call us to, to, to become professors and study and study and it. The Lord called us to do one thing, to glorify Him. Amen? Amen. We were bought by a price. And I do not belong to myself. Amen. And because of that, I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. And as a temple of the Holy Spirit, I am to bring glory to Jesus. Amen. Family, that's the gospel in a nutshell. Amen. That is what Jesus has come to do. Jesus came to earth to make a way for us so that people can see the result of the Holy Spirit in and through us. Amen? Amen. So now, as we end in prayer, we were chosen by God to be temples of the Holy Spirit to glorify Him. Family in Jesus, can can the rubbish of this world be brought into a clean house of God? Yes or no? So if we are sitting here tonight, which, which should be all of us if the word of God is true. If we are sitting here tonight and there's something in our lives that we need to sort out because it does not bring glory to God, then now is the absolute right time. Tonight is the right time to say, Father God, I heard your word. I heard that I have been called to be a temple. I heard that I have been bought and I have been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I heard tonight by the true word of God that I am supposed to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I have heard tonight through the word of God that because I am now called to be a temple, I must produce that result in my life. And so family in Jesus, as we go back into worship now, and it was so close now, I don't know who felt it, but the, the Spirit of God was knocking on doors Amen. In, in these first few songs. The Lord wants to come in. He needs, to, to, he needs these temples. Family in Jesus, that's the beauty about why the Lord created us is He loves us so much and, and He wants to use us. He wants, he wants to, to move in us. He, he wants to dwell inside of us so that we can go and change this world. And, and, and He said it to the disciples, I think it was. Um, after He said to this, He showed them their hands and the disciples were overjoyed and He said, Lord, um, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I'm sending you. Jesus said that I do nothing unless I see my Father do it. Amen. You go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see that every morning, almost every morning, Jesus would wake up before the disciples were awake, before the sun came up, and he would go to a quiet place, he would climb a mountain, he would spend time with his father, and his father would show him what he would do that day. That is why when Jesus walked down from the mountain and there was a crowd full of chaos, Jesus was prepared for it. He knew that there was a boy there that his disciples could not cast a demon out of. He knew it. His father showed him. And so he took his disciples and he said, hey my boys, how long must I still be with you? Come now. Stand one side and watch me. Learn from your master. And then Jesus goes and casts the demon out. Family in Jesus. That's what the Lord wants to do in and through us. 
You know there's a scripture that says that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is doing what? Is living inside of me. Do we know what that means, family? That means the living God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who is so big, he holds the whole universe in the palm of his hands. He's living inside of us. Yeah. And he wants to move. He wants to work. He wants to save this world. But first we need to get rid of this carnal thing. Amen? Amen. This Amen. carnal mind. Amen. We need to chuck it away. That's why Jesus said that we are to take our minds captive to the obedience of Christ. Amen? Amen? That's why Jesus said that. So our minds are out of the way. And beautiful scripture, I keep on saying it, it keeps on coming up. Our, our brother, King David, in, in, in the Psalms, he said, Lord, I pray that you will hide your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. Amen, Lord. Hide your word, Lord, in my heart. Lord, Father God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you will drench us with your word, Lord. Father, I pray tonight that we will be soaked in the word of God, that we will not sin against you anymore, Lord. I pray, Father God, that the, the word of God and the Holy Spirit will take a hold of our tongues, Lord, and rein them in, Lord, and make them behave so that we will only speak the word of God. So that we will only treat people, Lord, the way that you want us to treat them. Father, we pray tonight, Lord, as we go back into worship. Oh, Holy Spirit, we call on you tonight, Lord. We call on you tonight and we say, Spirit of God, no, we, we don't want any more of this. No more, Lord. No more of, of, of the old me. No more, Lord Jesus. I want to lay it down, Lord. It's, it's not only making me stumble, it's making other people stumble, Lord. I, I, I want to move into that area where you said, Lord, that you are creating in me a new being, Lord. A brand new godly being, Lord. So I pray tonight, Father God, and I submit to you, Lord, myself, and I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. We cry out to you tonight, Father God, come, Holy Spirit, come. And may you find a temple tonight that you can rest on, Lord. And with that, Father God, we pray, Lord, that we will worship you, Spirit and in truth, right now. In Jesus' name we